Okay, welcome. Um, should we fear the future? Well, that's a question. I mean, if you look at Pro 5, many people are not happy with it. Because it doesn't have a lot of features that we have in other languages. Um, it has to be back, back of the panel. Um, it's looking even harder to add features to it inside. And that's all because the inside is, people say it's C, but it's actually a language called Jenga. <laughs> <coughs> so for instance, um, iThreads. iThreads were originally developed to uh, make it possible to do asynchronous uh, execution in Pro 5. Um, but they are not the threads like most people know them. Um, they are actually an emulation of fork for Windows that was backported to Unix. One can then ask why that is that way? Well, it's because of the internal architecture of Pro. <coughs> so, what are the alternatives? Well, the 6 is an alternative, of course. Um, maybe a better runtime for Pro 5 is an alternative. Maybe other languages are an alternative. Or maybe a new Pro 5. Yeah. What can we say? Well, what's happening in a new Pro 5 initiative? We have some of them, but not here yet. <laughs> so, if we have all these new Pro 5 initiatives, we'll take, take uh, attention away from the real Pro. Uh, will not actually fragment the developer base? And will it actually not be a bad thing all around? Well, that may be, but it will also be a lot of fun. And actually, it has happened before. So, some history. First, Larry made Pro 1, and Pro 2, and Pro 3, and Pro 4. People might argue Pro 4 is actually Pro 3 with a book, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but things got to get heavier. So, we had Pro 4. It didn't have any extension mechanism. Uh, all the extensions had to be hard coded in the core, so you got actually many pearls around. You got Oracle, Cypherl, so for the database interfaces. It was really hard to maintain it because any core change needed to be actually ported to all the other versions as well. So this was fixed in Pearl 5. So Pearl 5 in 1994 was actually started in 1993 already. Uh, it had all these things like modules and objects and extensions. It was actually an easy language for scripting CGI, and that's why Perl became actually mainstream. Um, core development of it was relatively easy, uh, but Django actually developed very quickly. Already in 1998, Chip Salzenberg said, Perl is hard to maintain. I'm going to start something new, written in C++ rather than C. It was going to be Perl for the 22nd century. <laughs> yes, that's what he said, the 22nd century. So we're actually doing quite good with Perl 6 now. Um, <clears throat> if you want to actually see this here, the announcement, it's there. But this project was actually abandoned in 2000. What was really important about this project was that it was actually the inspiration for Pro 6. Mm. So in 2000 we had the uh, start of Pro 6, which was a community rewrite of Pearl. It got a lot of input from all over the world, and some of them are still being digested by Larry in some parts. Uh, but the result was a design document, actually several design documents. But then, how are we going to implement all this? Nice ideas everywhere, but we need to implement those. So in 2001, we got Parrot. Um, this was going to be the runtime, or the virtual machine for Pro 6. And maybe other languages. So initially, this was actually an April Fool's joke. But it uh, sort of uh, became an even bigger joke in the end. But that's <laughs> <laughs> um, So. <clears throat> We got out of hand, basically. I would consider it now to be an Edsel. 
Anybody in marketing here? No? no okay. So <laughs> Um, Edsel it was a, a car that was actually manufactured by uh, General Motors in the 50s and they designed this car after careful um, market research and f to try to find out what people wanted in a car. So they actually made a car that had something for everybody but not enough for anybody. So it was a car that nobody really liked. And it was basically one of the failures of uh, Ford in the 50s. And that's the situation with Parrot at the moment now. It has something for all these other languages, but no other languages are using it. And shortly, Postfix won't either, but that's another story. <coughs> and in 2002, we had Pony. Pony was curled on a new internal engine. Basically, because everybody wants one. Everybody wants a pony. I'm not sure where that name comes from, but anyway. <laughs> All um, the wheels of the pony. <laughs> <laughs> it was an attempt to actually run Pro 5 on Parrot. And it's actually run for about four years, and then it was actually deemed un unattainable. But the nice, nice effect, side effect of it was that it cost a major cleanup of the Pro 5 internals. And actually, all of those improvements were actually backported to 5.10. So, it was a project that actually did not work out, but it had some good side effects. Pugs was an implementation of, by Army Tank of Pro 6 in Haskell. <coughs> It actually was the first real implementation of Pulse 6 and it provided many pointers for later for Recudo. But the problem, the problem was that not many developers were actually first well enough in Haskell to be able to contribute. So this was actually stalled in 2006 already. The nice side effect of Pugs was that there's a lot that it created a large test suite that is still being used to this day. In 2006 we had Prolito. Prolito was a research project by Flavio. Um, the idea was to actually compile a subset of Pro 5 and Pro 6 and execute the JavaScript or Python or Ruby or Analyst or Go or whatever. So you can actually now do this inside the browser because it actually executes in JavaScript. It is a subset of Pro 5, it doesn't do modules for instance. So this is sort of really a Carlito, a little pearl. Uh, it was actually considered complete in 2013, but only half I've seen commits of Flavio creating a 64-bit machine code backend. Woo! Um, in 2006, Woo started. Well, already it was discussed a few times uh, in the workshop here. It's a new object system for Pro 5, made by Stephen Little. Uh, it was inspired by Pro 6 and there are many other systems, but it was bolted on to Pro 5, requires many modules. The, uh, initially, the idea was, or the meme was, that if you want to use Moose, you have to install CPAN. Not the CPAN module itself, but all of CPAN. <laughs> <coughs> so people actually started making smaller versions. Mouse, Moo, Mo, M. <laughs> and it's really chill, but okay. <laughs> <coughs> it's been widely used in production. In uh, 2009, Recudo actually started and was split off from the uh, Parrot project by uh, Patrick Michel and Jonathan Worthington. Um, it was the further development of Pearl 6. It actually started with the so called six model abstract object system. And it has since then, since then been distancing itself from Parrot more and more. Uh, with the idea that other virtual machines should be possible for Recruiter. In 2000, 2009, Larry started to actually work on processing Pro 5 code inside Recudo. 
Um, it may not include indirect object syntax. This is pretty hairy stuff in Perl 5 itself already. There's many cases that don't do what you expect, expect it to do in Perl 5, that's why they hacked around it and you know, it's really, really awful. It will not include access support. It was uh, sort of rekindled with the Perl Reunification Summit. It's now actually picked up by frogs. Uh, Tobias Like uh, this year. And it's now referred to as use D5. At the Epson North America, we showed us that you can actually write a piece of, piece of Pro 5 code, then actually have a block inside there that uses Pro 6 code that references firewalls in the Pro 5 space, and in there create a Pro 5 piece of code that actually references variables from the Pro 6 space. It's really, really good. <laughs> 2010. Start of Yetzia. It's a uh, full six implementation by Stefan Rear. Uh, it's from scratch using .NET as a VM. Uh, that's nice because you then have potentially a lot more uh, core developers. Uh, but it's stuck on a single VM. And In 2010, Jonathan started and uh, Patrick started on something called NGP, not quite Perl. They worked on, on uh, implementing Perl 6 and decided, okay, we need like a, a, a limited version of Perl to actually implement all the rest in. That's what they called NGP. It's a subset of Perl 6. It's like the mini Perl of Perl 6. There's also a mini Perl in Perl 5, but nobody ever sees this generally. It's the way to bootstrap Pro 6 and it's pretty much virtual machine agnostic. So it doesn't know where it runs, it's just HTTP. In 2011, P5 Mob started, which was actually a plan by Stephen Little to integrate Moose into Pro 5 Core. This was stalled because it was very difficult to, uh, to actually implement this in Pro 5 for, for two reasons actually, technically and from a community point of view. Um, they figured that even if they would manage to uh, find a way to integrate it into Pro 5 Core, it would be very, very, very hard to convince everybody on uh, P5P and the pumpkin to actually do this. So they actually gave up, and I, I, implement, I interpret that as change of In 2012, we had the NQP JVM, a Jonathan worked with basically run the NQP on the Java virtual machine. It directly writes Java bytecode, so it doesn't actually generate Java, but just Java bytecode. It allows for six to run on the JVM. Um, it actually does already more than a whole world at the moment. This is actually from a few weeks ago. Sorry, I just realized I should have updated that. But it already does a lot more than a whole world now. Without errors? <coughs> Not without errors, yes. It compiles without errors. Uh, mm -hmm. It compiles without errors, but it doesn't run everything yet. Okay. It is not self-hosting as far as I know yet. That's always a part that you, you go for as a developer, that you can actually implement your, your new system in your old system without actually doing anything else. Uh, in 2000, January 2013, uh, Stephen started something new called Mo. Um, it's basically Crux for 12.5. Um, it's basically a part of where all the frustrations of P5 Mob came out. And he wanted to do something else for Pro 5, specifically not for Pro 6, although it takes inspiration from Pro 6. This may actually turn out to be just an experiment or a research project. It's, it's actually not his intention to make this uh, a product, really, or use this in, in a production environment. 2013 also started P2. 
Good to is by Riley Urban. Um, anybody know Riley Urban? He's really very good at very low level things. He's not so good at building a community, which is a bit of a problem. Yeah. Um, he's using the Pull 5 plus I extension in roadmap. He's using Potion as a backend. And it directly uh, writes machine code, so it's really fast. But what is Potion? Uh, Potion is the, the name of the backend that he uses. It's is some guys who made a virtual machine that writes okay. machine code and okay. it's called Potion. You should have put Potion on here, maybe. What is it? Potion? 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 It's a VM uh, made by uh, Why is the Wiki Steve who was a personality in the Ruby community? <coughs> but it's potentially interesting as another Rakuda backend. He has expressed interest in providing it as a Rakuda backend, but uh, let's see what happens there. As I said, the community development is uncertain there. And going back in time, in 2012, Jonathan started with more VM. Uh, this is also going to be a backend for NQB. He kept it a secret for a year, because that's why it's going back in time. Um, it's going to be implement 6 model, complete Unicode support, generation uh, garbage collect built in, and it should be running by the Apache Europe. So we should be able to run Rakudo on more VM by August. Here's an announcement. Uh, another announcement that we saw at the Apps Europe was the Pool 5.6 intro project, which is actually running a standard Pool 5 interpreter, so basically it's Pool 5, inside more VM. And this is started by Diacopter or Matthew Wilson, and that's also very interesting because then you will be able to uh, run Pool 5 uh, inside Pool 6. Including access code, including all of CPAN. This is quite interesting. Okay, where are we now? Yeah? So, should we fear the future? I think no. But we should be vigilant because we should do more, more than rather than talk about this. Okay, we have a classic code 5. It's still on a yearly schedule, so okay, we have Rakudo, which is now moving away from Parrot, running on JVM, Morphium, has a healthy developer community and has monthly Rakudo star updates. We have Nitsha, nice, but actually it is stalled now and the main developer is now working on Rakudo since last week. <laughs> Most interesting, but it will never be intended for production use. But we all know what happened to DBIS class. That was also an experiment by uh, Mark Trout, and everybody's using it now. Uh, we have Q2, it's still early. So, final word of warning CPUs are not getting faster, but we will get more of them. But writing thread programs is hard. We shouldn't have to do this. So, Perl, I think, needs all the threading capabilities should be a USP of a modern pool. Anything in work? No, no, it's not. Okay. USP is a new selling point. Huh? Uh, pool 6 can on the thread, at least specification. Um, it will use multiple threads when it can, so you don't need to change the code for gives some hints. If you check out uh, James's hyper race in pool 6, that, then you can see that. And <coughs> with the Morphium, that's actually going to be implemented. So it's the future of Pool 6, check out Pool 6 on the pre -node. More people coming there every day. What's the future of Pool 5? Well, I would say follow where Mo is going. It will be a super least source of inspiration. Questions? Pas de questions Pas de questions Pas de questions Pas de questions Merci. Merci.